thank you to this edition of the Hepatology Podcast, where we uh, discuss with investigators uh, potential uh, trials that are published in, in hepatology. Today we have Dr. Berza Gowdy with us, and she will be discussing portal hypertension on the outcome of surgery for hepatocellular carcinoma in compensated cirrhosis, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Well, tell us a little bit about what uh, made you decide to look into this and, and, and your thoughts behind starting a study like this. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, the current management uh, of hepatocellular carcinoma based on guide guidelines from the ASLD and ESO recommend that uh, surgical resection is the first treatment option in patients with compensated cirrhosis very early hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, which is below two centimeters, or early hepatocellular carcinoma, which is uh, uh, one single nodule of any size, uh, in compensated cirrhosis, preserved liver function, and absence of portal hypertension. This uh, recommendation arises from a pivotal study performed by Dr. Bruch in Barcelona uh, with the BCLC group uh, in 1996, which, which shows that uh, if you measure portal pressure preoperatively, mm -hmm. uh, you can stratify the risk of patients to develop postoperative clinical decompensation after surgery. And this, the cutoff value for portal pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury, which is now uh, known as clinically significant portal hypertension. It was then confirmed by other studies from the same group, showing that the same hold, holds true uh, for patients for postoperative mortality at three and five years. So patients with portal hypertension in this study had a higher risk. However, uh, several groups uh, around the world in different parts of the world have debated and uh, um, regarding the present, the prognostic value of portal hypertension in this uh, population, suggesting that uh, surgical resection should be always the first treatment option in this kind of patient, irrespective of presence of portal hypertension, and that the decision should be based only on technical feasibility. So since right now we have other options that might give a survival benefit in this same population, such as liver transplantation, or in very early hepatocellular carcinoma, um, just one nodule, um, radiofrequency ablation, we thought that this is a very important point to uh, try to ascertain, and we decided to perform a systematic review and meta-analysis of published study to try to figure out whether portal hypertension is or not indeed a prognostic relevant risk factor for these patients. Despite the, the practice guidelines that we have today uh, on management of early stage liver cancer, particularly in those patients without clinically significant portal hypertension, there's still some controversy people are still unsure of exactly what to do. So part of what you wanted to find out in your systematic review and meta-analysis was to really shed light on what the data suggest in the published literature. So tell us a little bit about how you set the study up and, and maybe roll right into some of your top line findings. Yes, of course. So what we tried to do is to select study with easy inclusion criteria, but sound criteria. So we selected studies that were carried on in compensated cirrhosis with preserved liver function uh, that uh, uh, included patients for surgery according to well-established criteria and that reported outcomes, either mortality, three, five years post-operation and or uh, post-operative uh, decompensation mm -hmm. according to the status of portal hypertension. And portal hypertension should have been well described as for the method used to assess it in the study. And of course, they were, should be original articles in English. So with this uh, criteria, two of the author, which was myself and Dr. Maria Reg from Barcelona, independently uh, looked at the literature in the Medline and cross references in the paper. And we, from a uh, original set of 270 uh, studies initially selected, we excluded all the studies that were not relevant or had no, not clear uh, inclusion criteria. And finally, we selected 11 studies fully fulfilling the entry criteria, the inclusion criteria. These studies, uh, eight of them um, reported on the outcomes according to mortality and eight of them according to postoperative clinical decompensation. 
Uh, I have to say that most of these studies were retrospective, just four of them were prospective, most of them were unicentric and just two of them were multicentric, and most of them were from European countries, just two of them were for ja from Japan. So uh, these studies overall included 1,737 patients, and uh, going to the results, what we observe is, is that uh, uh, meta-analyzing these, these studies, Indeed, portal hypertension defined by any of the selected um, mm, methods that was either HVPG in four studies, portal venous pressure measurement directly during the uh, operation, or standard surrogate criteria, that is presence of gastroesophageal varices or spinomegaly plus platelet count below 100,000, well, Portal hypertension was associated to a worse outcome. Any of the three outcomes we saw, three, three years mortality after surgery, five years mortality after surgery, and 90 days decompensation. So overall, the risk associated to portal hypertension was about double uh, in for, as for mortality and was about threefold as for uh, decompensation. So just to summarize that, uh, in, my, in my mind, if, if I have a patient with clinically significant portal hypertension, as defined by a paddock venous pressure gradient of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury, or some of the other variables that you highlighted, that if I went to surgery to resect that nodule, that liver cancer, in that setting, my, uh, I would have twice the risk of death at three years, three times the risk of death at five years. Exactly. What I would like just to uh, point out is that not only is it like that, but when we looked at these studies, we found that there was some heterogeneity among studies, and this was largely, largely due to the method used to assess portal, portal pressure. So indeed, while the direction of the effect was the same and the portal hypertension remained associated to worse or outcome, whatever the method used, the estimate of risk was much higher in patients in whom portal hypertension was diagnosed by HVPG as compared to portal hypertension evaluated by non-invasive surrogate method. And I think this is important, and this is one of the things we discuss in the discussion of, discussion of the paper, since it, it underlines probably that non-invasive surrogate criteria that we are using up to now are not uh, accurate enough to well stratify these patients. So, Right now, probably HVPG is still the only method that allows us to be sure of the presence or absence of portal hypertension in very well compensated patients, particularly those without viruses, in which we have no other. Right. So, is it your recommendation based on this uh, review yes. that we do hepatic venous pressure gradient monitoring, or at least a one time hepatic venous pressure gradient test, if you're considering surgical resection in this group of patients? Exactly. This is our recommendation, and this is what we do routinely in our hospital, which is Hospital Clinic in Barcelona. And of course, we are also taking, uh, trying to, to uh, find new non-invasive methods that could better stratify patients, uh, allowing us to save and to spare some HVPG measurements. And there is some hope, uh, because we have published a study and we see that this is being confirmed in other studies regarding transient elastography in these patients. So liver stiffness is indeed quite a good method to rule out or rule in portal hypertension, and you can spare about 50% of HPPG measurements in this patient, but of course, when they are in a sort of gray zone of intermediate values between 13.6 and 21 kilopascal, you only can use HPPG is the only way of being sure that sure. HPPG occurs. So maybe transient elastography with some more data may be a surrogate yeah, we think that this should be further explored. It is not, sure. of course, validated yet, but we think that up to now is the most promising method for this. So you mentioned a couple limitations of your study and the fact that it's retrospective in most of these studies yeah. that we looked at. And can you highlight some of the other concerns that you had as far as how we look at that data with, you know, with, with the limitations that are? Yeah, there? I think the the major limitation of our uh, systematic review meta-analysis that, of course, what you find depends on the quality of studies that are included in the meta-analysis. We are aware of that. So when you meta-analyze uh, observational studies, you always have the risk that you cannot take into account all the po all other possible 
factors that uh, uh, might uh, change the outcome of this patient. So we are forced to use crude data. However, we feel that we try to put inclusion criteria that eliminated major uh, problems in this sense. For example, of course, we eliminated the studies, including for a section patient with macrovascular, macrovascular invasion or extra hepatic uh, disease. And there were a lot of studies reporting surgery and surgery in this patient that are, of course, patient with a worse outcome. So we excluded these studies from the meta-analysis from the beginning. And when we enter by uh, stratifying meta-analysis, uh, we try to compare studies with different, uh, slightly different characteristics. We saw that our results were very robust and we saw uh, exactly the same result in all the strata. So super, super. Well, in conclusion, I think what we can take away from this study is, uh, is that the guidelines are accurate, that clinically significant portal hypertension is uh, as significant risk to long short-term and long-term mortality at three years and five years if you decide to undergo surgical intervention on small nodules. So we're looking forward to further work from the, the Barcelona group and Dr. Berzagati as we move forward um, in future clinical trials looking at this uh, closer. Thank you very much.